So by ordering early, you have another distinct advantage. That's the race to be first on Google. Google gives a very large search engine boost to the first instance of unique content it finds in the internet. Before you broker load, the listing web page we provide for you is unique content. It's not found anywhere else on the internet except for the website we provide you. So if you have Google time to index that web page with a solid listing description and photos before you hit the market, your website will be considered by Google to be the canonical source of information for your listing. And that's really important because if you're marked as the canonical one internally by Google, it gives you a huge boost in search results. Everyone else is just copying your information, right? As soon as your listing hits the market though, there's a, you get in this situation where literally thousands of agents and brokerages will have access to your MLS data and post your listing on their sites. It's perfectly fine. Like I'm sure you guys do it too to, for other agents, right? I'm sure you've also seen from time to time, you do your own listing, you, maybe you'll Google it. You'll see that the first result in your, uh, for your listing in Google search is another agent's branded website, right? Like how much of a bummer is that, especially when your client's the one who Googles it? I know it's gotta be frustrating for you and your client especially. And, it, and while there's no guarantee that you're gonna be first in Google search, and I'm, I'd never promise that to your client. I wanna make sure you're extremely clear, never promise you're gonna be first in Google search because there's a lot of factors that'll be out of anyone's control. But what you can say with confidence is you're taking every step possible to optimize the Google search results by using proper search engine optimization strategy and practices. And if you can kind of explain what I'm talking about here, you talk about being the first on Google, like um, the first on the internet, having that time to index properly, time about you know, using proper English descriptions, stuff which I'll get to in a second. Like you seem knowledgeable about it, then the clients will resonate with that. And if you're not first in Google, you can explain to them why you're not as well. And it's really important to be knowledgeable about all this. And you know what? Like even if you're not, you don't know a ton about Google search optimization, you're not like super tech savvy. And even if your client knows it, that's fine. You can give them confidence that you're like, your marketing team is on top of it. There's nothing wrong with hiring a stager to stage a home. There's nothing wrong with hiring a photographer to photograph the home, right? So there's also nothing wrong with hiring a marketing company to do your marketing. It's an important thing for those who don't know the facets of everything, right? That's a good, I don't want to say excuse, but I guess it kind of is. So another pro tip that most agents using Spotlight don't actually take advantage of is creating a proper English listing description. This links back to the whole Google conversation as well. Our website we'll actually grab a listing description for MLS. So you don't have to do this, it's completely optional. But you can actually send us a properly written listing description in advance of loading on MLS. Now, the problem, the reason that the MLS description is not the greatest, and there's a few reasons for it. The biggest one though is agents have been trained to write listing descriptions in this like shorthand broken English a lot of code, like not well, I'm going to say a lot of codes, but a lot, of, a lot of shorthand notation, not full sentences, that kind of thing. Because you traditionally were a lot of like character limits you had on these things. So you try to stuff as much information as possible. Other agents can decipher it easily because they're in the industry, but there's two important groups that are notoriously bad at deciphering this. And their clients, which is obviously important to the people you're selling it to. And this is one of the biggest pieces of information you want to try and convey to them, but also Google. Right? So going back to the Google conversation, Google actually gives priority to sites with well-written, clear language. And Google's getting better every day at correcting language and realizing what's well-written. Just ask my kids. They love doing assignments on the computer whenever it's like a narrative writing thing because it corrects everything for them, including their grammar and everything, right? Almost like writes the thing for them. So MLS descriptions are anything but clear, well-written English in most cases. Writing this clear description in proper English will get you those bonus points with Google for both writing quality as well as uniqueness. And the uniqueness part's important too. Other agent websites, even after you broker load, they're not going to have access to this well-written listing description that you send us, right? So that gives your website an even bigger competitive advantage in Google search because you have that unique piece of content that no one else has access to because it's not on MLS. It's not just Google, but obviously, like I said before, clarity is important for prospective buyers. Some shorthands... There might be industry standards, but they're not common knowledge to the general public. Like when I first got into the industry too, the, the example I always use is, is ELFs, like electric light fixtures, right? Like I had no idea what an elf was. It took me a while to figure it out too, because it's kind of hard to Google elves. You get some weird stuff. You get Google elves on the internet, by the way. Um, so I guarantee like a lot of like the public 
won't actually know what it's a shorthand for, right? Uh, there's probably a dozen other shorthands too. They won't know as well. It just makes it easier if you can write it out, write down electric light fixture, right? People know what that means. So everyone understands, including Google. Also, if you don't send us your listening descriptions in advance, we won't have any material to use to record the audio voiceover for your virtual tour. So once your photos are taken, what we do is we generate a virtual tour. But we don't have the voiceover audio recorded because we don't have a listening description for you and it's not broker loaded. What we do is we generate a temporary video virtual tour for you without the audio. Because the video is temporary, that also makes it so that we don't uh, advertise to some of your advertising partners and our advertising partners I listed before until a finalized version of the video is published, right? Because we don't want to publish twice with, or publish with a, a half done video. So you can avoid this time issue altogether by just simply submitting a listening description. We always suggest at least 24 hours prior to going on the market. This will ensure the audio is recorded well in advance of it hitting the market. So another advantage of putting together a proper listening description is that you can use it to create a better virtual tour as well. It's something called audio sync. I don't, don't think that's an actual term, but we'll just use it anyways. So if your listening description is of, is of a certain quality, you can request that we sync the listing audio to match the video of the virtual tour. And what I mean by that is it makes it so that when people are watching the video to the virtual tour, be it like a slideshow or a video tour, it doesn't matter either way. When it's showing the family room, we'll be talking about the family room. When it's showing the kitchen, we'll be talking about the kitchen, right? At least for a much better streamlined experience. Well, this, this feature is no additional cost, but we don't provide by default. You have to do it on request. And the reason for that is because the vast majority of listing descriptions aren't in a suitable format that allows us to properly sync the audio and the video together. Uh, a lot of MLS descriptions, for instance, will have just like long lists of features and like you can't sync that to video. So what we're really looking for is a sentence or two about all of the major areas of the home. Right? So if you provide the listing description in that format, we can make the virtual tour flow properly with the video. Here's just a few like little points on like the four things I guess you should think about when you're when you're creating these listening descriptions. Uh, one or two sentences about each room. I just mentioned that before. Avoid long lists of features. Uh, you you can do that, but they don't sync well with rooms, right? Because if you're talking about you know the roofs updated here, the flooring's updated here, you can't really sync that with a room, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. But we can just tell, slap it in the end if you need to do that. Keep each sentence isolated to a single room. So if you're talking about, if you're talking about the kitchen, just talk about the kitchen. Um, try and avoid saying, okay, the kitchen and the bedrooms upstairs both have, well, I guess it wouldn't both have carpeting, but you know, that's an example. Just don't mix things together. Keep it isolated to each room that you're talking about. So we can show that room while we're talking about it. And the last thing is keep it to one and a half to two minutes. We've had people submit listing descriptions, which are, if you read them out, probably seven or eight minutes long, which is fine. We won't record the full audio for it. We will concatenate it for you, uh, the, the audio portion at least. Um, but the problem with that is, is that these, we found the sweet spot for these videos is two to three minutes. So we don't want to push it any longer than that because people lose interest. So uh, it's best to try and keep it on the shorter side if you can. And the easiest way to see what the timing is is just read it out yourself. And you might be surprised how quick or how long some of these can, can get uh, when, you're, when they're actually spoken. 